Hi everyone, welcome to Difference Frames the World, a channel to find a real China and its people. Recently, we published part 1, 2, 3 and 4 of China will win the race with the US and received positive feedback from most viewers. Today, we should have talked about how Korean War changed the Chinese people, but the tension in China South Sea changed our mind, so in part 5, we would like to talk about the difference between Chinese and US navies and whether it is possible to have a direct conflict between them. A recent poll on whether there will be a war between China and the US showed a shocking result. The report shows that among those people who provided their feedback, nearly 40% in America, 44% in Japan, 68% in India, 71% in Thailand, 29-46% to in France, Germany, Italy and other European countries, 65% in Brazil and 63% in Mexico, said yes. So it means more than half of the world's people think that there will be a war between China and the United States within five years. Since the Biden administration took office two weeks ago, the South China Sea has been very busy. The Roosevelt Aircraft Carrier Battle Group just left the South China Sea not long ago, the Nimitz Aircraft Carrier Battle Group, which just left the Middle East, swaggered into the South China Sea. People begin to worry if the US wants to form a dual carrier battle group to deter China. But we would like to say there is no need to worry about that at all, as Nimitz will not stay in the South China Sea for long. Following the Roosevelt Aircraft Carrier Battle Group that broke into the South China Sea last week, the Nimitz Battle Group also conducted free navigation in the South China Sea. It entered the South China Sea on the evening of February 5, local time, but it did not approach any islands or reefs under China's sovereignty. Jeremy Sloan, commander of the 36th Wing stationed in Guam, asserted that the United States must normalize the free navigation operations in the South China Sea to prevent Chinese military power from affecting regional peace and stability. He also said that China and Russia are threatening U.S. military bases in the Asia-Pacific region, so the U.S. military needs more aircraft carriers to support the free navigation operation. In response to his comments, a lot of Chinese netizens are wondering when Chinese and Russian ships will patrol the coastlines of the United States for free navigation. It is also worth mentioning that the John McCain guided missile destroyer, DDG-56, which had previously traversed the Taiwan Strait and sent dangerous signals to Taiwan, also entered the South China Sea and was very close to China's islands. Its imprudence was regarded as a serious provocation of China's sovereignty, so Chinese ships and fighters quickly arrived and successfully forced the guided missile destroyer out of the South China Sea. The arrival of the Nimitz in the Asia-Pacific region is undoubtedly is not good for China, it can definitely form a dual aircraft carrier battle group with the Roosevelt, which is currently stationed in Guam, and exert a great pressure on China. However, the Nimitz aircraft carrier battle group had been stationed in the Middle East for more than 270 days before it entered the South China Sea and is now nearing the limit of its deployment period. It has to go back as soon as possible for maintenance and repair before proceeding to the next destination. Therefore, the Nimitz is just passing the South China Sea and will not be active there for a long time, and the Chinese military does not need to worry too much. However, through the relentless actions of the U.S. aircraft carriers, Biden administration's attitude towards China has been explicitly exposed. With the departure of the Nimitz from the Middle East, the U.S. military currently does not have any carrier strike groups available in that region, meaning the U.S. has shifted its focus from Iran to China, so encircling China has become the top priority of the U.S. military. Although the Nimitz strike group will not stay long in the South China Sea this time, there is still a great possibility that the U.S. military will deploy a dual aircraft carrier battle group in the Asia-Pacific region in order to counterbalance China. As we mentioned in previous videos, a shift in the equilibrium has already been happening from the United States to China because of China's quick rising military power. A conventional war with China in the Far East will be a disaster for the U.S. Navy. In 2019, a group of U.S. military experts simulated World War III by means of sand table war games and came up with astonishing conclusions. Those experts believe that the focal area of World War III will still be the Eurasian continent. Among Europe, the Middle East and the Western Pacific, one of them will be the place where the war will break out, but no matter where it will break out, 
the Western Pacific will be a key battlefield. There is no doubt that the U.S. military has a huge advantage in the Middle East and can easily control the situation there. However, in Europe, the U.S. military and its allies are evenly matched with Russia. Even the U.S. military can win at last, it will incur extremely heavy losses. In the Western Pacific, the U.S. military will be strongly blocked by one of the major powers which will probably be China. According to the deduction of U.S. military experts, the U.S. needs to deploy at least 1.4 million U.S. troops in the first island chain. However, the result of the deduction was very dismal. According to the results of the sand table exercise, if the U.S. military does not retreat in time, the entire army will be wiped out within 70 days. With the opponent's powerful anti-stealth capabilities, the U.S. and its allies' stealth fighters and bombers will be exposed to the opponent's air force and missiles from China's fixed and mobile missile troops, and the U.S. aircraft carrier strike groups can only operate outside the second island chain because of the existence of anti-intervention weapons. For any country in the world, weapons are of utmost importance. A country's achievements in weapons directly determine its status in the world. For instance, Russia is economically similar to that of China's Guangdong province only, but it has advanced weapons, and it is because of those advanced weapons other countries in the world are very afraid of Russia. No matter how good a country's economic development is, if it does not have military strength to guard it, sooner or later, the treasures will be robbed away by invaders. In the past years, we have seen numerous reports on Chinese businessmen buying very expensive antiques from abroad and donating them to their motherland, but ironically, most of those antiques were booties of foreign invaders from the old China. On the evening of February 4, 2021, China announced that it has become the third country in the world to deploy anti-missile systems in the near future. This anti-missile technology, simply put, is a bullet-to-bullet -bullet technique to destroy the opponent's missiles at the outer space. With China's manufacturing capability and low costs, if it can make this kind of ballistic shields like making fireworks, the whole world can watch magnificent shows every night if World War III really takes place. Of course, this technology is only a protective measure instead of aggressiveness. China does not need hundreds of overseas military bases to protect the world, rather, it just wants to protect its own country from being invaded like before. This anti-missile technology can enable China to protect its people and territory from being attacked by other countries' nuclear bombs. And in response to the military pressure of the United States, in South China Sea and Taiwan Strait, Chinese Navy has also intensively operated in various sea areas, both in scale and frequency. According to a recent report by China's CCTV, China Maritime Safety Administration issued a navigational warning. From January 31 to February 1, Chinese Navy performed military missions in the Burhai Sea, and all other ships were prohibited from entering the relevant waters. From January 31 to February 7, it will perform military missions in the northern part of the Yellow Sea. At the same time, an actual combat training unfolds in the East China Sea. In this exercise, there were training activities to use naval guns to clear firepower on the shore, and Chinese Navy will also use anti-submarine rockets to intercept torpedoes. In addition, an actual combat training took place in South China Sea, and three 071 amphibious ships participated in that exercise, during which, the main guns of the three ships accurately destroyed the firepower of the enemy forces on the beach and carried out continuous fire suppression, caved the way for the beach landing. Also on February 4, Forbes reported that U.S. seemed to build no cruisers for 20 years, and most of its cruisers are nearing their service life limits, while China deployed 8055 cruisers. Very soon, the U.S. aircraft carriers will be short of cruisers, and China's 055 destroyers will become the most powerful warships in the Asia-Pacific area. In the eyes of American hawks, 2021 will be the last chance to contain China, but a direct conflict with Chinese Navy will be disastrous, if defeated, the U.S. supremacy will be formally over. In the past decades, China has spent tremendous efforts on missile development and has been able to destroy satellites and invading ballistic missiles. Not like the U.S. and the former Soviet Union, China does not spend too much money on nuclear weapons, but Hu Jin, head of its official news portal, Global Times, expressed his opinion, also regarded as the official opinion of China, 
that China should have more than 1,000 atomic bombs to safeguard its sovereignty and people. As for the exact number of China's nuclear weapons, it is always a secret for the world. However, China is the only country in the world that still possesses hydrogen bombs or super bombs. Russia and the US destroyed their hydrogen bombs in 2012 and 2013 respectively because of the super high maintenance costs. Thanks to its top scientist, Yu Min, China could make its hydrogen bombs with extremely low costs, and China can still possess them due to the low expense on their maintenance. In the future parts of this series, we will discuss how China produced its atomic bombs and super bombs in the shortest time in the world, compared with other countries like the US, Soviet Union, the UK and France. Recently, Biden stated that he is willing to cooperate with China when it is in the interests of the United States. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs responded that China is committed to developing a non-conflict, non-confrontational, mutual respect, and win-win relationship with the United States. It seems the ice-breaking work is beginning. Earlier today, Yang Jiqi, Office Director of China's Central Committee for Foreign Affairs, had a telephone conversation with Antony Blinken, the new U.S. Secretary of State, at the request of the U.S. side meaning that the United States realized it is necessary to ease the tension between these two countries. We sincerely hope China and the US will not involve themselves in a hot war, and also hope they can avoid a cold war, but we have to say that the Biden government might be more aggressive than Trump administration, because Obama, to whom Biden used to be the vice president for eight years, participated in two wars in the guise of NATO, in Libya and Syria. Compared with Obama, Donald Trump is more like an exaggerating boy, who only knows how to bully his schoolmates on Twitter. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. We do our work as a mission, a cause, please help us grow and reach more extensive audiences by forwarding our content to as many people as possible. We publish videos daily and post long videos on topics viewers are interested in once or twice a week. If you have not subscribed to our channel and turned on the notification bell, please do it now, so you will not miss our new content every day. If you want to support us, please use the PayPal or Patreon link below, or scan the QR codes on the screen.